I just wanted to show off my alien mug. <laughs> okay, I think today, um, today will be a big success if we can get um, our first move locked highlights. Well, no, 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 it's actually... So once we lock in our first move, our our gray highlight right there, or our our dark green highlight there is our first move locked highlight. But I'm hoping today we will be able to start to implement that um, orthogonal logic, and hopefully we can highlight green and any any potential um, legal move. So that would be a big success if we can get that. So that's what we're gonna be shooting for. Um, let's see what happens. We need a, uh, we need like a locked um, column here, look. Move locked row, move locked column. Uh, we need to actually probably make this first move locked. here so look if we're move type move and we're clicked within a legal move highlight and our occupants is one which um, for right now we can only do it if if there's only one one space in there because uh, we haven't figured out how to move a stack yet um, but and we're not first move locked so we can only do it once we can take a stone out of a spot put it at our mouse and then highlight it green and then save our, they want this to be called first move locked row. So first move locked row, because we need multiple ones. Um, actually, we can just overwrite, we can overwrite it. Yeah. Since we only need one value at any given turn or any given set of movements, uh, we can actually just override it, I think. So we can leave it like that. So we're locking in our row and we're locking in our column. So now we need to do some logic for the highlighting of our available moves. So um, we need to switch our legal move highlight boolean. Is that what it is? No, legal move. It's an occupant. Legal move highlight. So yeah, we need to trigger our legal move highlight to become true on the appropriate um, values. Uh, so we will right here. So we need to say So we, well we need to do a couple things. We need to do corner cases. We need to do edge cases. Uh, because we don't want to be able to highlight anything outside of our legal grid, so we kind of need to specify these things. And then we need to do middle cases. Now, corner cases should be easy enough, and we can say uh, if move locked, move locked row is equal to one and locks column is equal to one, then um, this is where we would need to put corner case logic, but this is actually only one, that's the top left corner, but we also need um, first row, fifth column, so we can say else if locked row is equal to one, but her column is equal to five, meaning the top right corner. Um, do that. 
else if move locked column is equal to five, but we're on our first or no, no, no. row is five. Yet our move lock column is one. And last but not least, the right bottom, which is move locked row, would have to be equal to five. And our move locked column would have to be equal to five as well. So we've got top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Um, so we need to do the spe specific um, corner cases. So if it's the top, if it's the top left, then we need uh, our grid at one, two. We need its uh, legal move highlight in. So this is the, the square, one square to the right of our top left corner. That'd be equal to true. Um, and our grid is a 2D array um, that we access by these indexes. And then um, the array is populated with occupants and occupants have this legal move highlight, which is what we end up rendering with our 100% bright green right here. So if we're the top right, we would say Oh, we need to actually do the bottom beneath beneath the top left, which would be the second row, the first column. Also, we need to get uh, legal move highlight to be true. And this, this method will highlight them. As soon as we click the top left to move, I feel like it would render the possible highlights right away, but I feel like we're gonna ultimately want to only highlight them if our mouse is over there but we'll do one step at a time here so first row fifth column that's the top right so that means our um, first row left of the top right would get true and then we would need the one beneath it beneath the top right so that would be the first row Oh no, that would be the second row and the fifth column. So that would get equal to true for the top right. Now the bottom left would mean we would want our uh, fourth row, first column, to be highlighted. And then we would want our um, we would want our last row and our second column to be highlighted. And then the bottom right would be we need the last row, but above, so four. Um, and then we would need our second to last row at the last column to be equal to true. Let's see if that's working as intended. Oopsie, 356 right here. Literally what I just typed. So this is, um, this would have to be, we'd have to have something placed um, shoot. Let's get it to be Black's turn, switch it to move type move, and then we click on it, um, and it's not working. If it's move type move, then if that grid's legal move highlight is true, or it's move locked highlight is true, then we render that grid. 
so I don't know why it's not rendering. Locked row. See, we assign it here. I guess let's make sure we're assigning these appropriately. So, they're on debugging. Sixty seventy, and then we want column move locked column. So this is to start debugging why it's not working. And then this is going to be five twenty, and then we can delete these two and then see what's up. So we've got some corners. Move type is move. It's Black's turn. So, uh, see how, oh, we didn't change our column on the debug, but it is locked in. So those values are working. So for some reason, the, uh, the highlight is not working, um, which we could possibly test with another uh, debug statement here something like uh, we want to see if this um, if grid at what five uh, five row uh, fourth column if that is legal move highlight, uh, if that's true or not. So we can say five or legal move highlight. So let's see. Black's move. We need. Oh. We need to add this. Okay, blanks move. So five four is right here. So this we're looking for this value that's currently false to be true once we click on it, uh, which it is not. So five four. Is just not getting overwritten properly. Um, you would think we do it right here with the five four if the locked. Yeah, if move locked is five five, then legal move highlight is true. Legal move highlight. Legal move highlight. So for some reason. It's not working. Now our locked row is five, five and five, because right here we got five, five locked. And if five, five is locked, then we should make our four, five, or no, our, we should make our uh, five, four legal move highlight true it is not happening.
Yeah, this isn't working. Um, this 5-4 uh, League of Move highlight should be true because we're clicked. Well, actually not because we clicked, but because our... Right here, if I move locked row... Um, Like the LCF shouldn't be screwing this up, but what if we uh, manually just do only this one? So this is actually in our love. This is in our click detection, which is actually why it's busted. So let me actually just fix that. We don't want this in our click detection. We want it right outside of it. Our click detection ends right here at this end, so we can place all of this. Because by the time our click detection ends, we're uh, not actually going to be updating that appropriately. So. Now maybe that'll work. No. You know, we're 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 um it looks like we set the legal highlight um boolean now, which we didn't before, but um it's still not rendering it, so why are we not rendering it? Because we go through here and we say if the occupant's legal move highlight or if move locked highlight, then we render, and then if we render if move locked or if legal move. I don't know, dude. I don't know why it's not working. Oh, right here. And not first movement locked. Um, this is wrong. So we added this so that we would only yeah we added this so that our yeah we shouldn't do this in the render. We added this so that we wouldn't render a legal move. Yeah, this is stupid. Let's just fix this. So first movement locked. We need to make sure that um, when we... Let me see. Nope. Um, we want to render any legal move highlight. Uh, not only if it's first movement locked. We added that in the render so that we wouldn't highlight anything in our control when it was move. Um, but I guess we just need to flush, and we do that right here. We, we make sure the legal move highlight in that given um, space we click on gets flushed, so we don't need it in the render anymore. So we've got the placement highlights. We've got the control highlights now. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So that is, uh, you know, like the darker green for that's where the stones came from. And then the brighter green to where um, any viable move is. Now that's just one corner case, but let's test the other corner cases. Let's, um, for right now, I'm going to take out the stack that I have as a test so that we can test all the corners. So we'll test top left corner first. Oops. Okay. So 
So yeah, top left corner works. We'll need to set it. We'll need a program so that our R does a complete reset of the whole board. Uh, we just don't have that yet. So black's turn. We've got the black highlights on the corner cases. Then we need, uh, that's the bottom left. Place. Oh no, move. It needs to be Black's turn. Cool. And we've got that. So, let's test our edge cases. Then we'll worry about only highlighting it when we're hovering over it. I'm trying to think of how I would even do that. But yeah, let's do edge cases. Um, shit. corner cases so I want to add a note here saying this is move one legal highlights um, it's actually this one actually be moved to no it is move one because we haven't moved just yet we clicked a space to move therefore the first move highlight would be the ones that we're actually highlighting so we've got corner cases we need edge cases so we're going to say if our locked row is equal to, so let's do the, the top, left, right, bottom, I guess, or left, right, and top and bottom, which, how should we do that? Left, right, top, bottom. So our locked column for our left edge case would have to be equal to two, no, one. Yeah, our column has to be the first and um, our moved, our locked, move locked row would have to be greater than, um, greater than one, and move locked row. Would have to be smaller than five. So this is the top left corner we're excluding and the bottom left corner we're excluding, but every other column in the left edge case. Then we would set, um, fuck, no, shit. Okay, okay, no, 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 okay. So this would just mean we have to do the appropriate uh, arithmetic logic we are talking about. So we would say, shoot, man. Tough time. Let's say this is left, left edge. Uh, then we would say, do right edge, which would mean our move locked column would be equal to five, but it's not the top right or bottom right. So we would say, and move locked row. We could also do, yeah, we don't have to do the greater than or less than, but uh, we, you know, either we do this is not equal to one and not equal to five, or we say greater than one. Maybe it's more explicit saying um, not equal to. Uh, not equal to one and not equal to five. And the right edge would be our locked column would be five and our move locked row would not be equal to one. And our move locked row would not be equal to five. Okay, now um, 
This is right edge. Now we need top and bottom. So we're going to say if our move locked row is equal to one, meaning top row, um, and move locked column does not equal one, and move locked row does not equal to, no, and move locked column is not equal to five. So we're saying if we're in the top row, but we're not the top left or the top right, then this is the top edge. We'll have to do our arithmetic inside these logic uh, statements here. And then bottom would be if our move locked row is equal to five, but our column does not equal one or five. Okay. So we did We did the numbers here. Like we put in the numbers of the grid to be highlighted, but what we probably should have done is placed in whatever our move locked row really was for anything that's one. Well. I guess it's fine to hard code it like that. I guess it's fine. It's just that now that we're doing the edge cases, instead of doing uh, these for the corner cases, these are the only two orthogonal spaces on those corner pieces because there's only one of each corner piece. So we can't do something just like this where we hard code it for our edge cases because there's three edge cases for each edge case. So we would want to do some logic. So if it's a left, if it's a left um, edge case, we're going to say that it's the column. Uh, we need column minus one, same row. No, 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 no. Opposite of that. Fuck. Yeah, we need it. Let me just type out the uh, left edge pseudo code here. So if it's the left edge, we need um, a space above it, a space below it, and a space to the right of it. So the space above it would be the locked row minus one and then locked row plus one and both of these. So this would be locked row minus one and same column, same column and then locked row plus one, same column, and then one to the right, which would be the same row, same row, but column plus one. Locked column plus one. So that's the pseudo code for it. So we would say instead of the legal move highlight on these grids, we would take, um, we would say grid at, and it goes row, then column, right? First bracket's row, second is column, yeah, so row, then column. So we're going to say grid, whatever our locked um, 
row is. Locked row. Move. Locked row. Um. Now, move locked row is an integer, so we should be able to just do logic like that. Um, and then put in the same column. Move locked column. And then we would say the legal move highlight boolean will now get true. So that's the one above it. Um, but we also need the one below it. So we would say grid move locked row plus one, same column. So uh, move locked row plus one, and then same column. And then dot legal move highlight gets true. And then we need the last one, which is uh, locked, same row, locked column. So same row. So we say our move locked row, and then, oops, then we say our move locked column, just plus one. That's the one to the right of what we selected. And that legal move highlight would get true. So now if we move on an edge, on a left edge case, uh, let's see if they're highlighted. And then if they are, we can go ahead and just, oops, go ahead and do the rest of those cases. So let's do move type move, um, or black, perfect. Um, let's make sure the top one works. Bottom one works. Uh, then let's make sure the top one works. Then if, if this one So the left edge cases seem to be working. Uh, I just want to make sure that the corner case isn't broke. Now that we did that, it is not. So I'm feeling pretty confident that I can just go ahead and do the rest of these logics and then test them. Uh, so. The, the pseudocode really helped here. We'll do the same thing for this one. So for the right edge, if it's the right edge, we want it to be, um, we need one above, one below, and one to the left. So we need basically the same as this, one above, one below. Actually, let's just do the whole thing. So um, we need one above, which is same column, one above, uh, true, uh, one below, same column, true, um, and then one to the left. So this would be minus one. So that's our right edge. Then we need top edge, which We should say something like, uh, well, we would need same row and column plus one, and then same row uh, and column minus one. Then we need uh, below. So it would be the same column. No, same row, same row, and column plus one, because it's below. So we just need to translate that to real code, which would be same row. So we put in our move locked row, uh, then we need column plus one, move locked column plus one. Then we need that field's legal move highlight. True. Now. We need same row column minus one. And then we need same row. This is different. This is wrong. Um, 
this is same column and row my row plus one. No, no, it isn't. Um, top edge case. It's the same, same row, column plus one, same row, column minus one, and then it's the same column, row plus two. So this is where we messed it up. So same column and row gets incremented by one, so it's beneath it. So we would say um, same column but our row would be shifted down one. Okay, now our um, bottom edge. Now we would say bottom edge would be same row um, and column plus one. same row and column minus one then we would need same column and it would be the row minus one because it'd be directly above it so but in we need the same row same row column plus one yes then we would need same column no, same row and then column minus one, which we've got. And then we would need same column, row minus one. Okay, so now we can test our, um, I guess let's test top. That's looking right. Let's test our right. That's looking right. Let's test our bottom. Looking right. Okay. I'm curious. I know. I know we can make this more efficient, um, which, but I, I want to figure out the highlighting first. Um, so right now we just have a boolean that says if that's legal move highlight, then get true, but we only want to render it if it's legal move highlight and we're over it. So. Legal move highlight. See, we want to say um, we only want to render. Oh fuck! See, then this is tricky because it's like it's almost like we need a a render or a a highlight thing to render instead of the whole occupant render. So it's like we need to break this out. because we don't want to change the value for the legal move highlight, but that's how we're rendering it. So it's almost, or maybe in the render, we only do legal move highlight and grid, fuck. Yeah, we'd have to cycle through the grid. Uh, we'd have to cycle through the grid, check where our mouse X grid, mouse Y grid is, and then uh, if they're equal, 
then you actually render the legal move highlight. Instead of just rendering it right off the bat here. So if we take a look at um, see this grid, mouse Y grid, then mouse X grid. We need to do an I yeah, we need to do a nested loop and then check if uh, if i is equal to the mouse y grid. Where do we do that? I know we've done that before. Right here. So we need to do a nested a nested for loop and then we if if x grid is the second nest and mouse y grid is the first then we would change that grid in that loop um, to true and whatnot. So let me just you know we need okay um, so Let's just do it here last. We'll say this nested one, and we're making sure we're in the move type place. If our grid, if our if our grid, if our mouse grid is the same as the corresponding grid, we set our locked highlight actually. It's not that simple because we need to render, we need to render the whole occupants. Like we need to render the occupants no matter what. And we need to only render the highlight. Uh, okay, that's what it is. We need to do this only in the render for our legal move highlight. So, um, It's, so we need to do this. Our move type is pl place. Um, uh, and our mouse grid is over the given grid. We can say if that grid, if that grid at that locations dot move legal move highlight then we actually render it so um, this is actually move so we say move type move then our mouse grid then we um, so this is what we're doing Instead of just rendering legal move highlight, we want to be able to only render it if we're at the same mouse grid. So we're comparing the mouse grid to our current grid, uh, modifying that current grid's legal move highlight. Oh, shit, that's not right either. Wait, no, 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 that is right. So if, if, if our grid, actually, yeah, this is, since this is in the occupant, we should be able to just say, uh, if mouse grid, no, I think this is okay. the ends here so instead of just saying because we're calling render on this whole occupant we still want to be able to render any stones actually yeah we're not even doing render stones in here 
We do that in members. Okay, this is confusing. But this allows us to then, uh, if our move type is move, uh, if that grids, the move highlight is true, we're gonna render it. It's not so cool. If it's true, we're gonna render, but our render won't actually render that legal move highlight unless it's equal to our mouse grid. So if we did that right, we should still have the same amount of green spots, but they should only appear when we hover over them. So, um, close. Close. It's like it's, it's rendering That's close, but it's, if, yeah, see, it's actually this, not move, not if any highlight is true, but if the current mouse grid, if the specific grid at where the mouse is, um, is true, then render, then render the highlight. So if we do this, fuck. it's close. It's just rendering them all. Um, if mouse screen. I don't know. I don't know. Where do we do that mouse grid trick where we render the placement positions? do that it's different than our placement highlight because there's more than one with this we're saying hey swap this boolean to true if you're hovering over it otherwise it's false um, but what we're trying to do is we keep our boolean of our legal move highlight true but we want to only render the highlight if we're if we're of it. Shoot, man. I don't know what to do differently. So what I'm doing is saying if our move type is move, if our mouse grid is equal to the current grid, like we're saying. <sighs> yeah, this isn't quite right. What we want to do is only render. Yeah, we only want to render the Just see what happens if I switch these around. We're not even. Fuck. Why did that mess up? Oh, we're rendering the available moves.
shit. I don't know why that would be the case. Fuck. I guess for right now, I'm gonna just do this. We're gonna leave this, um, leave this where it's rendering all of them at once. Actually, this might actually be it. No, it's close. Um, Let's go back to this being self. Okay. We'll just, um, we'll leave it at that. Um, I just can't think of how to fix it right now. So if we take a look at our git diff. We added all the logic to uh, legal moves for all the corner cases, all the edge cases, not quite the middle cases yet, but um, we got it working, then we just need to make it work uh, when it's hovering instead of just uh, on screen highlighted, and then we need to make it pretty, I guess, and ah. didn't get Add everything to the staging area with the commit message saying added legal added legal legal first move highlights for edge cases and corner cases. And then I'll get pushed that to our repository. Okay, then I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, we've got plenty of stuff to do. It is getting more complicated than I thought. I feel like we might need to decouple. We might need to decouple. Um, the occupants um, render logic with uh, their highlight. I, I, I don't exactly know what we have to do there, but maybe I'll think of something. Um, and then if not, well, I mean, we'll just keep uh, chugging along, getting a little bit, little bit by bit. But yeah, I'll see you tomorrow.